great champ he was, and uh, he's going to try to rekindle some of that old uh, stuff he used to have. And tonight he promises to really use that jab because this is what he's going to have to do to keep Mercer off of him. Counter with that right uppercut. He says he's going to knock Mercer out. He told me personally with the right uppercut. He's going to lure him into a corner, wait for Mercer to do something, and throw that right uppercut, and keep his left hand up, though, because there's one thing he gets hit with is that overhand right. Happened against Tyson. It could happen here if he doesn't defend himself well. And there he is. Larry Holmes. Next to him to help lead him out will be his nine-year-old son, Larry Jr. Larry Holmes, a two-time grandfather, so he's the granddaddy of all heavyweights as he gets ready to make his way into the ring at the Atlantic City Convention Center for tonight's edition of Pride vs. Power. At age 42, Larry Holmes trying to become the oldest heavyweight to capture the crown. The year Larry was born, 1949, Harry Truman was in the White House and Joe Lewis was on the comeback trail himself in his own effort to regain the title. And there he is, Larry Sr. and Jr. ruled the heavyweight division from 1978 through 1985. He's been 5-0 and in his comeback, but he's had to go the distance against the likes of Eddie Gonzalez and Art Card. So that's where all the doubters set in. Go, Larry! Go, Larry! You got it! And that's the view he has as he makes it towards the ring here at the Atlantic City Convention Center. He's had a fascinating career from his disparaging remarks against Rocky Marciano to running over tops of cars to go after Trevor Burbick. But he's been there for years and he's back once again for perhaps the final time. Look at that, 20 successful defenses. And here he is, the former heavyweight champion of the world entering the ring, Larry Holmes. Saw a peak of Joe Frazier in the ring as well. Record of 53 and 3 with 37 knockouts. The three losses, two to Michael Spinks and one to Mike Tyson. We thought the Tyson fourth round knockout ended his career. Not so. All right, Goosen's corner now for the undefeated Ray Mercer, Joe. Of course, Ray Mercer, we've seen here a couple times already on uh, TV KO, and he's always been impressive as far as his heart and guts and everything else, and he's got a hell of a punch. What he's got to do, though, and this is first and foremost, he's got to pressure Larry Holmes. He's got to get inside, and that means getting past the jab and right hand without getting hurt. And lastly, he cannot let Larry Holmes tie him up on the inside like Holmes did to Tyson for three rounds. He's got to keep his hands busy in there. And Ray Mercer getting ready to enter the arena. As you know, he won the Olympic heavyweight gold medal in Seoul in 1988. Let's hear about his biggest moment of triumph to date. Made me feel proud to represent every American in the world. My heart was just warm. And when I think about it, I sit here right now, I feel like I want to cry. I just warmed your heart up. Just know that you, you, you've done the best that you can do representing, you know, the USA. It's obvious from the start that this is a Ray Mercer crowd. As he wins his way towards the arena. And his wins against Francesco Damiani and Tommy Morrison and even Burt Cooper. He's won the fights, but he's paid the price along the way. Big question tonight will be, Joe, Larry Holmes certainly knows what to do, has it in his head, but can the body do what the mind wants it to do? Well, I've, I've never really, I mean, he seems so confident that he almost has you believing that he can do it. And he's certainly in great shape. He's got Don Turner there in the corner with him. I just, I just got to feel that Larry Holmes is not going to try to kid anybody. He got himself in a good shape and is going to try to put on a wonderful per per performance tonight. And here comes the undefeated Ray Mercer. Eighteen and 0, 13 knockouts. We saw his demolition of Tommy Morrison, but remember Mercer took a lot of shots in the first three rounds from Morrison. Referee Tony Perez a bit slow in stopping that bout in the fifth round. And, and so Mercer, our tale of the tape, Joe, is really one of the more fascinating ones in the annals of TVKO. Holmes, 12 years older. 
his weight about 20 pounds more than when he fought in his prime. But Ray Mercer here, the heaviest he's ever fought at right. 28 and three quarters. And Larry Holmes with that five inch reach advantage to land that, what he keeps calling that hammer, that jab. And of course, that jab is what really kept him the champ for so many years. Here we go, a three fight average now. And we've got Mercer and Holmes basically throwing the same amount of punches here, landing the same amount. And the percentage of connects are about the same, of course. That depends on who they fought and where they got this three-fight average from, the quality of opponents. Here we go, let's go to the jabs. Three-fight average, of course. And Holmes, look at this, 29 around he throws compared to 17 for Mercer. But of course, landing 10, he's gotta be a lot more accurate with his jab if he wants to keep Mercer off of him tonight. And the rules for the 12-round non-championship fight, a 10-point must system, standing eight count again, and the three knockdown rules in effect, cannot be saved by the bell in any of the 12 rounds. The doctor or the referee could stop the fight. So we are ready. Let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introduction. Oh, and here comes Holmes, moseying on over to Mercer's corner, giving him a little bump. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bob Arum's top rank incorporated in association with the undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser, presents the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. Boxing Commissioner, Larry Hazard Sr. The Chairman is Jerry Gormley. Board members in attendance, Gary Shaw and Richard Harrison. Deputy Commissioners, Lawrence Wallace and R. Yogi Hiltner. Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Frank B. Doggett. Attending Physicians, Dr. Earl Shaw and Dr. Charles Wilson. And the Timekeeper is Roosevelt Gilbert. The three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system are John Potteray, Phil Newman, and Eugene Grant. And the man in charge, once the bell rings, is referee Steve Smoger. And now, ladies and gentlemen, before we go to our featured fighters this evening, let me introduce to you one of the all-time greats. He's right here in the ring at this time. The first American heavyweight to win an Olympic gold medal. He went on to become the undisputed and undefeated heavyweight champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Smokin' Joe Frazier! gentlemen from the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino here on the boardwalk in Atlantic City New Jersey uh, let's get ready to rumble 12 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division introducing first fighting out of the blue corner he weighed in at 233 pounds wearing the white trunks with red trim his professional record 53 victories only three defeats 37 KOs. He ruled the heavyweight division for seven and a half years as its heavyweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, from Easton, Pennsylvania, the Easton assassin and former heavyweight champion of the world, Larry And across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, his opponent wearing the white trunks with black trim and weighing 228 and three quarter pounds. He's originally from Jacksonville, Florida, but now fights out of Newark, New Jersey. Ranked number five in the world by the IBF, this 1988 Olympic gold medal champion is now 18 and 0 as a professional with 13 KOs, and he has held the WBO world title in this division. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated, merciless, Ray Mercer! Are you gentlemen, we're giving your instructions at the way and I want you to obey my commands at all times. I want you to respect the bell, and I want you to protect yourself at all times. Now touch him up. Let's rock and roll. Let's go. Larry Holmes kept talking about traps that he will set for Mercer. Joe, what do you think he'll try to do? Well, he already told me what he wanted to do. He said, when you see me back into a corner and dip to my right side, put my left arm out, I'm going to hit him with an uppercut and knock him out. All right. This is the ring where we saw George Foreman acquit himself well against the Vander Holyfield in the birth of TVKO. We'll see what Larry Holmes can do as he accepts the jabs of Ray Mercer, who goes after Holmes. Mercer 
Spencer the aggressor in the opening moments. Mercer said it will not go 12. A few people down. He is a 4-1 to one favorite, Ray Mercer is. Holmes uses the so-called hammer for the first time. First oh. defense is there, and Larry with the right hand. That right hand came off nice and quick off that jab, and that's what he's got to continue to do once he sets Mercer up with that jab. It was Holmes with the right hook as well. There's a strong right hook from Holmes. And as you can be expected, Mercer just came right back. And rabbit punching Holmes behind the head, and Steve Smoger should warn him for it. And Holmes sticks his glove in Mercer's face. This has become a grudge match. You noted earlier, before it began, when Holmes walked over and stalked toward Mercer and bumped him. Well, Mercer landing a nice right hand to the rib cage there of Holmes. And of course, Holmes answers back with his own right hand to the ribs. <laughs> Mercer just nodding. It's turned nasty and entertaining simultaneously as Holmes just puts out the left hand on Mercer's head. the body from Holmes. It was a right hook that caught Mercer's attention at the one minute mark and Holmes staggers backwards. And here comes Mercer after Larry Holmes. And it looked like Mercer hurt him with a jab and really wobbled Larry Holmes. And still a full 45 seconds remaining in the first round. There's Holmes with that uppercut from the corner position you were talking about and tries another. Mercer with a look at the stain on his face. Mercer just puts his hand back on, Mer on Holmes's head the way Holmes had done to him. Well, Mercer just tried to jump in with that sneak little left uppercut, the one that caught Damiani on the nose and knocked him out, and it just barely missed Larry Holmes. And Mercer backs up Holmes again in the final seconds of the first round, an entertaining round for sure. Holmes already puffing a little bit, but he's throwing a lot of hard punches and a lot of wrestling going on in there. Mercer goes, yeah, as he heads back to the corner. Alright, let's go back here, and we're going to take a look at, at that jab, whether Holmes was either off balance or it really did stagger him. Only this replay will tell, we're going to go back to it in a second. Work the whole body, work the whole target. Here it comes. Now here's Mercer, he steps in, boom, right on the side of the chin, and that hurt him. Absolutely. <laughs> Larry Holmes is dazed right there. But a good stiff jab can act just like a, a straight right hand if you get hit properly with it and it sneaks up on you like that one did. Right on the side of the chin. It almost knocked his mouthpiece out. But there goes Mercer, noted for his wild attacks there. If you stayed a little bit calmer and take your attack to the body there, he might have scored a few more punches. It almost looked like um, Holmes twisted his ankle there at the same time or something because he almost went limping back to his corner after the round. Starting the second round. Grandfather certainly seemed winded after the first. Threw close to his allotment of jabs per round. He threw 24 and landed 14 for almost a 60% connect compared to 29% for Mercer. Mercer continues to be the one moving forward. We talked about the hammer all week from Larry Holmes. Well, he was hammered by a jab from Mercer in that first round. Holmes connected with one strong right hook in that first. And Mercer got the better of him aside from that. Right hand followed by the elbow from Mercer. Well, both of them traded right hands there, and Holmes did connect. But uh, here, Mercer just seems to shrug off everything he gets hit with, which has got to be discouraging for Holmes. So I think I think that's the position that Holmes is talking about, that he, he wanted to be in. 
leaning down to his right and coming back to that uppercut. Of course, that one landed, but not on the chin. See, every time Holmes puts that straight left hand up there to hold off Mercer, he's got to go, Mercer's got to go right down with that right hand underneath the heart of Larry Holmes. And a good counter right hand by Holmes right Holmes there. Holmes is the one who landed there. in that sequence. Let's see, Mercer should be going to the body here right now against Holmes. Holmes is very cagey, protects himself very well. the one who landed the left of the body. A good right hand from Larry Holmes. Guess it's a jab moving out of there. Another right from Holmes. And Holmes again with a left. So as Tommy Morrison did, Holmes is able to land some strong punches in the early rounds. And look at Mercer just, I mean, it almost looks like he's just walking through the stuff, comes right back and uh, asks for more. But of course, those if those, keep, if those punches keep coming like they are, they will accumulate and they will slow down Ray Mercer. And it won't help him during this fight, that's for sure. Mercer with a strong chin and heart. And that's a tremendous combination for a heavyweight. Final 20 seconds of the second round. This is what Holmes was talking about right in there when he puts that arm up, leans to his right, say he wants him in yeah. there. He said, come on, come on. And he's nailing Mercer with right hands and uppercuts. And Mercer just stands in there and takes them. Mercer talking and says, come on. Yeah, he's talking to him. It's exactly what he did to Tommy Morrison when he got hit with the best shots in that fight. <laughs> Holmes lands some more as the round comes to a close. Larry Holmes obliged Ray Mercer when he asked him to come on. He's got hit with three more good right hands. If Holmes keeps this type of pace up, if he's capable of doing it, well, this this could be the sure. pattern for the whole night. That was a good round for Holmes. Yeah. You know, you know. Deep, deep. That was a good round. Smart, half steps. Every time he throw a jab, you count him, you tie him up. You walk him like we talked about this morning. All right, let's go back to early in the round here. Holmes misses that right hand, but look, he loops a couple over and one under. Ties up Mercer a little bit. All right, let's take a look at the end of the round. Now, that was the beginning, like I said. And here's the end of the round where Holmes really lands the majority of the punches. Look, one, two, he missed with that. Landed that one high off the temple of Mercer. Got through the gloves there. Those punches with the, the weight of Larry Holmes and the accuracy of his punching, they hurt even when they're deflected. Holmes with the punches and the connections in round two. Of course, the question you're asking yourself is, can Holmes keep this up for 12 rounds? As we start the third. Well, that question would, would be answered for Ray Mercer. If Ray Mercer was going to the body a little bit more, you'd probably say, well, if he keeps getting hit like this, he won't be able to go 12, but he's not getting hit to the body. Holmes said he put his hands down like this, and he did for several seconds. Mercer said, I hope he does. Well, he did it. And now Holmes lands another jab. Holmes with his hands down. Another of those so-called traps as they exchange right hands. Right. He was leaning back like we saw James Tony and Mike McCallum doing all night, waiting for someone to throw their right hand so you can come back with your own. Mercer sticking his hand up with the left and trying to punch low with the right. Well, here we go again. Holmes in that corner where he says he wants to be. Is he feels he can knock out Ray Mercer in this corner, but right now Mercer is getting a little bit of the better of it. Holmes is tying him up well, though. Holmes wants to come with the right uppercut. See, he's they expanding. Said, come on. That's right. And, and Mercer's expending a lot of energy, missing those punches. Larry content to have his back to the corner. Holmes is really nullifying most of those right hands, with the exception of those two little ones. And look at Holmes. He's really feeling his oats tonight. And Larry Holmes coming on strong in the third. Mercer continues to stand there and take it as Holmes works the body now. Well, we know Mercer can take oh, it and take it and take it. Mercer, the one saying, come on. Turned into vaudeville. Now, Steve Smoger, the referee, is just sitting back, kind of watching this and enjoying it himself because these two are doing all the work right now. And they're certainly putting on a show inside of a minute to go in the third round. Mercer, the big swing and miss, and he laughs about it. And Holmes lands the body and then the right cross. Uh, now Larry Holmes looking out at some adoring fans here, yelling to him ringside, and he, he looks over to him. And then lands a few more punches. 
Masterson with the left hand. This is real schoolboy stuff. And Holmes with a combination. Mercer lands the right. Mercer the left to the body. And a right hand from Mercer. Holmes, Holmes getting away up. from mostly all of that. He's holding on the ropes with the right hand, and Steve Smoker's letting him do it. Oh, Mercer's got Holmes in a headlock here. Steve Smoger cannot really pry these two apart because Holmes has got his hands wrapped around the top rope, not letting Mercer get off. Anybody have a can opener? <laughs> just rests up against that ring post throughout the round. And he heads back to his corner. Well, you know, to tell you the truth, they're both having a great time in there. And our guest judge for our main event tonight is Jackie Callum, who is the manager of the IBF middleweight champion, James Tony, who's fighting tomorrow against Dave Tiberi. So, Jackie, how do you have it? A heavyweight fight, anything can happen. But so far, I think I would give the slight edge to Larry Holmes. He's been... A little busier, he's been more accurate. I think that uh, Mercer's punches have been hurting him more, but I think Larry's pushed off a lot of that, and he's been very busy. Well, for what it's worth, I scored it the same as you through the first three. Larry Holmes there, the 87% connect percentage in the third round. Less punches thrown, but a lot more connected. Correct. And Larry certainly looks worn out at the end of the round when he heads back to his corner. Larry's still sitting while Ray is stalking his corner. That's right. You do all that work for three minutes. That's why you take advantage of that one-minute rest, get it all back together, and go back to work. And here he goes. Larry probably set a record for time spent in one corner for an entire round. That was during the round. I'm not talking about between them. Well, they say, what does the state of boxing come to when the people like George Foreman and Larry Holmes are the big draws? But... You can see what it's come to. It's come to entertainment. And that's, that's what we're seeing through this fight thus far. Well, not, just, not just entertainment. You're seeing a real good fighter in there. Larry Holmes is 42 years old. He may have lost some of his speed, but I'll tell you what. He hasn't lost any of the experience, and he's a smart fighter, and he's still effective, even at 42. You hear the leather of uh, Mercer just shakes his head. Thought he connected a good one, and Larry didn't feel it. Ooh, left hand from Mercer. Mercer has Holmes in the corner, and Holmes tries to come out of there, and Mercer holds on. Holmes Let him go, uh, Ray. Holmes really doing a good job, though. Well, I'll tell you, Mercer is one mean son of a gun. He Taking can... a warning from Steve Smoger. He would not let go. Mercer with the uh, sarcastic bow towards Holmes. Well, of course, you know, Mercer isn't exactly the most technical guy in the world. He's tough, he's a hard hitter, and he's got to make up for his, maybe his lack of real technicality with being rough like that and mauling you and leaning on you and pushing you, and it's an effective, uh, it's an effective strategy for him. This is where Mercer should be getting off straight into the belly there instead of standing up. Two good right hands from Mercer, but see the thing is that Holmes has slowed down a little bit in this round. He's not quite as active as he was the previous couple rounds. Well, he couldn't keep up that pace. So well, no the thing is sometimes you have to settle into a, uh, a fighter gets in such great condition he depends on a second win coming. And good that right hand it was Holmes. a great right hand, and that may come in the next round or two. And Mercer again just waves it off. That was a tremendous right hand from Larry Holmes. Side of 30 seconds remaining in the fourth. And he thought it would not go this long. Holmes looking to set that trap for the uppercut. Yeah, it looked like he should have pulled the trigger there, but didn't for some reason held back. I don't know if he's a little fatigued right now, but uh, so that was a good opportunity for him to throw it. third of the distance has been completed. Four rounds done. Don't let him rest. You're letting him rest too much. Now, come on, let's get this man out of here. Come on. Come on we don't man. need this. this but that's because you're letting him rest. Okay. Go ahead and work on him. You get him on out of there. All right. I'm 
tired. I gotta go to work. You playing with him too much. Get him tired. Your arm is hard to get him. Move your head. You gotta get that down. Put your arms down. Put your arms down. It's a party, eh? Yeah. <laughs> hey. You bully you, you bully me. It's a party. Told you they were having fun. Look at this. That's interesting. 100 punches uh, landed out of 140. 71%. That's probably one of the highest uh, connect percentages I've seen. Bear in mind, this was the round where Mercer disposed of Morrison last October here in Atlantic City. He's capable of disposing almost anybody at any given time, Mercer. And when he does hurt you, he's explosive and accurate with his punches. And he said, unlike when Holmes fought Ali and motioned for the referee to help stop the fight, Mercer says, I don't do that kind of stuff. I wouldn't even do it to Holmes, who was one of my idols. And you saw that that's what Mercer did to uh, Tommy Morrison. 14 straight punches. And right hand from Holmes again. And this is his familiar position over here in the, this Come corner on, on top of us. Holmes holding him off with good left hook by uh, Ray Mercer in there, but Holmes seems to be in such good shape this fight. He's taking a lot of his punishment. Good right to the body, and then the uppercut from Mercer. And there's the right uppercut from Holmes, but not a lot on it. Good right hand, and then the left from Holmes. And there's the jab. Here comes Mercer. Step, Ray, step. Come on, <laughs> oh my. And Holmes doing the dance. Okay. We've seen a little bit of everything thus far. And no knockdowns. Well, to be doing something like he just did, he's got to have a lot of confidence in himself and in his conditioning right now to be able to clown around. Midway through the fifth. Mercer with the glancing right hook. And Mercer breathing a bit heavily now as well. Holmes goes to the body. And that's one of the reasons why you get a hit there. That really takes a lot of air out of you. Side of a minute remaining in the fifth round. Good, good. Well, you know, uh, Mercer's corner, we're, we're, we're chastising about waiting so much, and he is waiting a lot, and that's due to Holmes' really his great movement and his slickness on the inside. He's got Mercer off guard right now. Some good movement and agility as you saw him slip the punches there. So Holmes, as Foreman did, they're spying the age right now. Steve Smoger just. Warning Holmes not to hold on to the rope with his right hand and jab with his left because you get extra leverage there and that's illegal. Holmes giving as good as he's getting. Mercer is breathing hard. And the crowd now cheering Holmes' combinations. A remarkable performance thus far through five rounds from 42-year-old Larry Holmes. Yeah. Really, has uh, some brilliant, wonderful action here. I mean, between two big heavyweights, one of them being 42 years old and really looking like uh, a top-rated fighter right now. Here we go. Here's one of Holmes' punches. Laying back in the corner, right hand, left hook. And of course, uh, Mercer looks and says, all right, now let's try that again. Uh, really, a lot of Holmes's punches aren't really stunning or staggering, Mercer, but they're definitely piling up, and that effect can cause you a lot of problems later on in the fight. I just find it interesting that here after the fifth round, the 30-year-old is breathing more heavily than the 42-year-old. Well, part of, the, part of the game here is learning how to relax. And at 42, you've learned all there is to learn in boxing. And one of the key things to be able to go those distances and throw the long punches is being able to relax. And Larry Holmes is as relaxed as you can get. Holmes uses every second on the stool. Mercer up earlier. Sixth round. One thing, for 12. Excuse me, Len. One thing that's come up on the CompuBox statistics is Mercer's really started to land a few more punches. His average is up to 61% connect, where Holmes is still hanging around 77%, which is...
very high connect percentage. And Larry is answering Mercer's supporters. <laughs> Mercer's supporters are yelling out, do this, and, Mercer, and, and Holmes is yelling back, oh, that's what you want? Of course, that's Akbar Mohammed, uh, the ex-vice president of top-ranked boxing, yelling to Ray Mercer, his young protege, to throw the uh, right-hand left hook, and Holmes hearing it and knowing who he is and, and answered back. <laughs> In the middle of a fight. This is remarkable. Well, he's got tremendous concentration tonight. You see the way he's really, he really sees all the punches coming, and a fighter this sharp is going to see and hear everything. Unlike Foreman, Holmes taking a fight like this much earlier in the comeback, and now he's taking some punches from Mercer. Holmes says he will retire by the end of this year, one way or another, by the time he's 43 years old in November. Well, if Mercer keeps landing punches like we'll he just sooner. did, it might be a little bit sooner. And the advice from ringside really paid off because he threw the right hand left hook, and it landed. Holmes is talking to our camera. He says, I'm not Tommy Morrison. <laughs> He's carrying on his own commentary. We should stop talking, Joe. Well. <laughs> Mercer waving We should have Mike Holmes tonight. Well, see, he's given Mercer a little taste of his own medicine, though. That's a psychological warfare, and it can, you know, make you think twice about, gee, what, what I'm doing has no effect on my opponent. And Mercer was talking to them, talking to Holmes when they were close in the clinch a moment ago. So we near the one-minute mark in the sixth round. Right hand from Holmes. Another combination. Mercer just takes it. Well, Larry Holmes is putting everything behind those shots he's throwing, too, which has got to take a lot of steam out of him. But look, here again, he rolls with those two right hands and comes back with his own uppercut. Do you think if we told Larry to get back in the corner over here, he'd hear us, Len, and oblige us? Probably would. He'd probably speak into the microphone over here. There it is again, that one-two left hook. I mean, that's the most basic of combinations in boxing, but it's really working against Ray Mercer. Mercer smiles after it. Remember, Mercer took a pounding into the ninth round before he broke Francisco Damiani's nose. I mean, True. Mercer's been through wars and has taken everything. <laughs> Fought with a broken jaw against uh, Bert Cooper and prevailed in the end. <laughs> but look at Holmes really just beautifully pick off these punches. Throw his hands up, stifle the punch, and come back with some short little body shots against Mercer. The fight is halfway through. And once again, we will check in with our guest judge, Jackie Callen, James Tony's manager. Jackie? You know, it's really a great fight, a lot better than I expected. And you know what I think? Larry Holmes is so experienced, and he's like an automatic pilot. It's like he knows what to do. He's just going through the fight like any other fight. Um, I still would give him a slight edge because I think he's been very active, and he's a lot of the punches haven't really hurt him the way you might think they have. And I think at this point, if he can keep it up and not get tired, he's liable to walk away with this decision. Here we go on a little replay here, and the action in the corner, and that's been round in and round out. And now the crowd on his feet as we start the seventh round, and the question will be, once again, can Holmes do it for 12 rounds? He's done it for six. Oh. Right hand, and then the uppercut from Holmes. Oh, Holmes with his familiar oh, position. Wow. I mean, Steve Smoger should have seen that. Ray Mercer just threw a blatant elbow right to the side of the face of uh, Larry Holmes, but of course, he was Robert on the opposite side. Holmes. And Mercer with the left hook of his own. Corner dance right now with a minute gone in the seventh. Finally, Steve Smoger separates them. Mercer starting the chop of the way, chop away here with little short punches. He's landing a few of them. The but they're from Holmes again. Right. And that's got uh, Mercer's mouth bleeding pretty good right now. And the crowd chanting Larry. It started out as a pure Mercer crowd, and Holmes has won them over here in the seventh. 
He's really knocking the tar out of Ray Mercer is what he's doing with that right hand, right uppercut. And Mercer, I think, is really round by round starting to lose his grip on this fight, and he's really got to do something to turn this fight around. Got hit with a great right hand there. Oh, Mercer with the left hand. Mercer, oh, strong combination. Well, I'll tell you, Larry Holmes took a right hand and two left hooks and came back with his own right hand, which shows you what great shape he's in. He took, those were square on the chin. But if Mercer gets into this type of mode where he starts landing, you know, more, more and more frequently. See a little blood on the lower lip of Ray Mercer. Many people thought with the type of opponent that Holmes had, that it was a, a, a joke his comeback. Well, Hasn't been thus far through nearly seven rounds complete. He's looked good. Another right hook. And Mercer puts his hands down. Well, what does that, that tell you? That, that's got to tell you that. He's buzzed right now from that right hand. The moment Larry Holmes is winning this fight. Well, he's definitely landing the more solid, accurate punches. And he's, like I said, these type of punches, this is the seventh round. I mean, these are going to start catching up to Mercer if they haven't already. And somewhere right now, George Foreman is watching totally and smiling. A, yes. <laughs> and maybe even be thinking of having a fight against Larry Holmes. The crowd roars after the seventh round, and Mercer slow back to his corner. Well, they, they, came in, they came in booing Larry Holmes, and now they're cheering him. They need to tie the man up or you punch. Oh, that's what I mean right there. The right hand and the left hook is the key. But you're not doing it. It's not, if it's not doing you no good if you don't use it. You got two, two good ones. But you're not letting them go. You're waiting on me. You got to go. This is your fight. What you can do, big Jack? You're working. You want to rest? Get close and walk it. Get close and walk it. You want to rest? Get close and walk it. Again, Limited Mercer up. up early. Holmes continues to sit. You saw his connect percentage. Threw fewer punches, but landed a much higher percentage number. And here we go with round number eight. 40 punches landed for Mercer in that last round compared to 17 for Ray Mercer. Holmes goes back to the hammer, the jab, and another one. Mercer's mouth opening a little bit more. Some about Ray Mercer, even though he's behind in this fight, tells you that at any given moment, this guy could turn the fight around no just question. with one good barrage of punches. And this is what Holmes hopes to not let him do by using all of his smarts and not getting hit with that shot that starts it off. Good jab from Holmes, and Mercer came back with two great body shots and a left hook to the head. Yes, he did. Of course, by... Holmes pulling down on the back of Ray Mercer's neck makes him struggle to get his head up and of course wins you a little bit and that's a, a ploy that Muhammad Ali used for so many years so successfully. Holmes still has dance in his legs. Moving okay here in the eighth, midway through now. Mercer continues to stalk him as he has throughout the bout. You gotta wonder if Larry Holmes right now is wishing this was only a 10 round fight. Uh, if, if we're correct in our assumption that he's ahead on points right now, he'd only have two more rounds to go instead of four. Well, it was originally scheduled for 12 as a WBO championship fight, but then the WBO withdrew, saying they wanted Mercer to fight Michael Moore. But it stayed at 12 rounds to fight. And of course, Michael Moore sitting three rows back, keeping his eye on this, because um, I'm sure he wouldn't mind getting a crack at the winner of this fight. Oh, good left hand from Mercer. It was a great left hand from Mercer. It wobbled Holmes for a minute, but he's good and warmed up. He took it and he's moving away, trying to collect his senses. Another telling blow 
The earlier one was just a simple jab, really early in the fight for Mercer. That left hook was tremendous. Tell you, Holmes is doing well here boxing with the exception of that left hook, but he was doing extremely well, I thought, in the corners sure. when he was uh, really using his experience to out-slick Ray Mercer in the corners. And he's just moving his arms around slowly, just pulling out all the stops, caught a right hand from Mercer. One of Holmes' stronger rounds. No. And uh, you got to give that one to Mercer. Larry looks a little bit more vulnerable from the outside than he really does on the inside. Oh, landed a good right hand at the end. After the bell, Holmes landing the right, and that does it for eight rounds. Tell the truth, who thought it would go to nine? All right. Get him out there and keep him out there. You got the left hand working. Good time. You hear what I say? You got the left All right, let's look back at that left hook. Bing, bing. Boom. See, Mercer, or uh, Holmes leaned in with the jab and got caught pulling out here. Let's see it again. He steps in. Bingo. Has that right hand down, and it did catch him clean. Look, he does a little stutter step there. His legs were a little unsteady, but uh, he composed himself and got back together. Straight right hand from Mercer. Of course, it landed, but uh, Holmes, Holmes kind of rolled with that one. It didn't have as much effect as I think that left hook did, though. But to answer, One year ago, Francesco Damiani had Mercer behind, and Damiani was ahead, and Mercer, with a left uppercut, broke Damiani's nose, and that was it. That's right. That was the ninth round a year ago. And this is the ninth round of this fight, and Holmes starts with a right. Of course, to answer your question at the end of that round about did anybody think it would go nine, Larry Holmes and Ray Mercer certainly thought that this fight was going to go some rounds. That's why they both prepared so hard. And I had a feeling, too, if Holmes was in shape, he could make this a distance fight. But I certainly didn't think it was going to unfold this well for Larry Holmes in this fight. Up to this point. That's right. I don't know if Holmes was just taking a breather in the eighth or if he's just slowed because uh, from the eighth into the beginning of the ninth here, he certainly hasn't done what he's done earlier. He's cut down on the talking to the crowd and to uh, Mercer as well. Well, this is the serious part of the fight, not, as, not to say that the first part isn't, but this is where you're a little fatigued, uh, you know, your, your guard is down a little bit, and you've got to really be on your toes and all your concentration on your opponent, especially a dangerous one like Ray Mercer coming out here. jab working even if he's backing up good right hand from Larry Holmes one of his best beautiful right hand set up by that double jab and he's got Ray Mercer thinking right now and a little hurt and Holmes starting to come forward for the first time now he backs off well what happened was he overshot that right hand and Mercer uh, countered him with the short right hand lunging in that well this looks like Ray Mercer is going to need another miracle knockout after being behind on points if he's going to win this fight Holmes gets the jab in there and the crowd starts up with Larry once again and Holmes looks fresh again Couple more jabs from the ex-champion. Well, Larry Holmes, after taking a breather in that last round, certainly came on, landed some beautiful straight jabs and some great right hands and won that round. And Holmes is three quarters of the way home. This crowd is just starting to realize that right now that Larry Holmes may win this fight. Was he a four to one underdog going to this yeah. one, Four to one. 
All right, Jackie Callen, how do you have it through nine? Well, I'll tell you something. Larry Holmes is looking very impressive. He's looking yep. very refreshed. Looks like he took a little break and is coming back strong. But I'll tell you one thing, you can never count Ray Mercer out. Because if you remember the Damiani fight, it was the ninth round. He came back, and anything's possible. Mercer's a very good, strong fighter. I think Larry's experience is uh, teaching him a lesson tonight. Here we go, back to that right hand, set up by that beautiful double jab. Thank you, Jackie. And, um, of course, backed off Ray Mercer and stunned him for a second. Here it goes again, over a shot. Boom. Boy, if that was a little bit lower on the tip of the chin instead of on that cheek, that could have done a little bit more damage. Jackie, and I also think of your fighter, uh, James Tony in Davenport, Iowa, against Michael Nunn in the 11th round. That's right. All right, here we go with the 10th. Well, Holmes sticking true. 71% of his punches landing compared to 44 for Mercer. Look and at Holmes dancing, yeah. Joe. This is just tremendous. Really, this is an amazing stat. He's, he's really out-punched, out-boxed, and out-slicked Ray Mercer tonight. Mercer at the point where he has to go for a knockout. It's a two-round fight right now, you know, as far as Larry Holmes got to look at. He's got six minutes left to uh, really just take this round and the next round, and, and he'll pull off another shocking upset in the world of boxing, which nobody, I, I doubt, thought he could do. Mercer has him against the ropes again. A lot of time remaining. I mean, a full eight minutes in this fight. Just so good at tying you up, putting the arm out there just to deflect the punch enough just to keep the, Look the at steam Holmes. off of it. Oh, and the Holmes wiggle tonight. Oh. tries to work the body. Good way through the 10th round. Looks like Mercer. Wants to throw that hook, and that's what he was setting up to do. Got the right hand in there. Right at the very last punch, but uh, Holmes really nullified those two hooks he threw. Holmes clearing his nose there momentarily. That'll make any fighter back off. <laughs> well, somebody's got to get busy here if they want to win the round. Right now, Holmes has landed a few more punches, but... Uh, somebody's really got to take control. It's, it's six minutes left in this fight, two rounds left, or actually four minutes left in this fight, and uh, I think it's crucial to both these guys to win these rounds. Good right hand. And another right hand from Holmes. Joe, we still have two full rounds after this uh, 40 seconds. You're right, I got caught up in the excitement and, and lost a round there, but the point is these rounds, these late rounds, are crucial to both these guys. Whoever wins the last 20 seconds here might win this 10th round. I think by virtue of that good right hand that Holmes land, that was the best punch of the round. Uh, see, he's blocking and deflecting blocking a lot yeah. of those punches. Not landing Mercer's punches. The left hook did land for Mercer. That's right. As a full 10 rounds have elapsed. Now they've got two rounds left. And Mercer goes all right as he heads back to the corner. Maybe he thinks he won that round. Yeah, no. But this bad baby is too close to come. It's too close to come. But you got to go to work. You got to have these next two rounds big. Okay? This is everything. You can do it, baby. You're the greatest of all time. Why? Well, here we go. Home, 70% of, of his Come punches on, landed. You got, and that really is a basis for him winning most of this fight by virtue of him landing that amount of punches. You're walking good this time. Stay out of that Of course, show. you wonder how the Stay judges are going to feel. Who, you know, the Ray Mercer is, in a, is from uh, New Jersey. Well, let me and, ask you. Would, you know, would they get caught up perhaps in a sentimental choice in Larry Holmes, the judges? Well, I... I hope they wouldn't. I hope they'd go just on the basis of his performance tonight, which has been excellent. If anybody's going to get the sentimentality, it'll probably be Ray Mercer. Hmm. He's a hometown kid here. Interesting thought. From our vantage point, it appears that Larry Holmes is six minutes away 
from a handing Ray Mercer his first loss. You heard the crowd when uh, Holmes came in, they booed him. So this is really not uh, Larry Holmes' turf here. But Holmes gaining the respect for the older generation, much as George Foreman did right in this arena back in April. Well, if, if, if this fight is being scored like we feel it's, it's being uh, won by Larry Holmes, then he would be safe to just box and really pile up some points and stay out of harm's way these next two rounds because I think he's got a pretty comfortable lead right now. I just find it amazing how all of us scoffed when George Foreman came back and when Larry Holmes started to come back and everyone laughed. And then there were no laughs now. That's right, well, and it goes to show you that men still, I mean, these fighters with this type of experience, and Holmes is an exceptional talent to hold on to the world title for seven years, so it's not beyond a man of his age to still keep on fighting and do well. Richard does appear tired. You wonder if he has enough for that one punch that he's looking for at this point. Well, he's shaking and Mercer's shaking his head no, but but Holmes is landing the better punches right now, and he's Again. scoring the points. And no usually means yes in boxing, as you know. Inside of a minute to go in the 11th round. His punches are missing for Mercer, and he does appear to be tired. That's right, and you know, you've got to ask yourself, this is the heaviest Ray Mercer has been in any of his pro fights. And uh, they just chalked it up to saying, why worry about the weight so much? But uh, it looks like he has slowed down, didn't have the intensity he had for uh, Morrison. Just remember, Ray Mercer's only fought past five rounds five times in his career. Larry Holmes has done it 35 times. And it's really showing right now. really doing all the work here and, and I mean Mercer really trying to force the fight but Holmes scoring. Larry Holmes three minutes away from perhaps a stunning upset. This has got to be nervous city for the handlers and managers of Ray Mercer right now because there's a lot of money going out the window. That's the old time generation here. I mean, these are the active ex-champions. Larry Holmes comes in third. Behind uh, Saul Mamby and the George, a few months uh, younger than George Ford. Keep that body no, down and shoot that. Keep his body down and shoot that right hand over it when he come in like that. Are you the champ? You the champ. You got it. What time is it, fella? Hold oh, time. Hold oh, time. Let's go. I want you to fight. Tuning in and didn't know who was who. Jackie Callen just made a good point to us off mic. Who looks like the 42-year-old and who looks like the 30-year-old right now just by looking at them? Well, the 30-year-old looks like a 42-year-old because he's taking the brunt of the punishment tonight. And here's the last round. Holmes has outlanded Mercer in the last two rounds, 50 to 22. Does Ray Mercer need a knockout right now to win this fight? Only the judges know. Holmes does the wiggle again here in the 12th. Ducking the punch. Still has the reflexes. The song keeps coming to mind. He's in the money. He's in the money. Because Holmes is going to make some money now. It's a big win for him. The question of the night I was mean, Larry Holmes' his head knew what he could do. Could his body follow? And so far into the 12th round, the answer is a resounding yes. Now well, let's just see if the judges see it uh, our way here, and I, I really feel that Holmes is in control here. Also trying to land in the corner. Good Two count. minutes left in the fight. Good counter uppercut by Holmes after he blocked four or five punches of Mercer's. Now Mercer's supporters try to get him going. 
And he hits Holmes, and Holmes counters with a right to the body. Did Ray Mercer underestimate Larry Holmes tonight in training? Maybe because he came in so heavy, it, it almost seems like he did. Mercer with the left hook, still a minute and a half to go. Just missed with the right, and Mercer just missed with the counter hook. But that right hand could have done a lot of damage as well as that hook could have. One minute from a decision. Holmes should be content to hold on here. This is remarkable. Well, you never want to take anything for granted. You want to finish up. You got a minute left here. Finish up strong, but beat smart. <laughs> and Holmes yelling with a war chant. <laughs> and Holmes comes on. And there goes Mercer with 30 seconds to go. <laughs> Fighting to the finish. Will Larry Holmes' remarkable career continue after tonight? And from our estimation, the answer will be yes. It's a double yes, Len. Feet. Well, Shippen, what a great performance distance. tonight. Well, Mercer looked at Holmes. Great fight, he said. I think few people thought to begin with it would go 12 and even fewer thought that Holmes would have a chance to win it after 12 and now of course you know the way we saw it and the way the judges saw it we'll, we'll see if it's the same fight and the way Jackie Callen James Tony's manager saw it let's check out her scorecard Jackie how do you have it well I would have to give the fight to Larry Holmes I'm not a boxing judge but just based on the way he boxed and the, the class he showed in the ring Ray Mercer is a great fighter, and he will certainly be back for a lot of great fights, but I think tonight was Larry Holmes' night. Isn't that something? Who would have thought it? I know you didn't. I know I didn't. Well, you know what? I wasn't really sure going in what could happen, because Larry Holmes is such a smart, experienced fighter. Mm -hmm. But, of course, if Ray Mercer hits you with that dynamite sure. of his, that's the end. So. You know, when we talked to Larry Holmes yesterday, he was just so confident with such um, just absolute assuredness that he was going to win this fight and, and you kept asking yourself is them is it false bravado but was you could really see it in him from the first round yep. he was almost playing in there he was having a good time tonight mm. that's just remarkable ray mercer may have just suffered the first defeat in the hands of 42 year old but you Larry never know Hall. how these judges are going right? to see it Well, I think we're ready for a decision as the fighters embrace one more time. Michael Buffer has it. Scorecards. Phil Newman scores the bout. 117 to 112. Eugene Grant scores the bout. 117 to 111. John Pottere has it. 115 to 113 for the winner by unanimous decision from Easton, Pennsylvania. The former heavyweight champion of the world. Larry Holmes! He's done it. And we concur. Good call. And Holmes looks almost overcome by the moment. And a look at Ray Mercer, who's just suffered the first defeat of his career. He goes to 18 and 1. What a story written in Atlantic City tonight. Bob Arum was saying during the week, the winner gets George Foreman. I'm not sure that's signed, sealed, and delivered, but it would be the answer to the question, what's 85 years old and weighs a quarter of a ton? It would be a Holmes-Foreman fight. Now, let's go to Joe Goosen in the ring. Joe? Larry, what was the overriding reason you won this fight tonight? You gotta tell me, what's the bottom line to why you won? Well, Joe, 
Wait a minute. Ty, hey, quiet a minute. Joe, everybody say you got to lay down and die when you get to be over 40. Mm -hmm. But you know, you don't have to. I worked hard. I didn't burn the candle at both hands. I done it because I feel that I had to do something for me and for the fans who love me, who stuck by me. You know, I want to say I want to thank uh, Lou Marciano for calling me, wishing me the luck, Lou Duba and all the guys. And you know, I really appreciate it because people that hate me is more people that love me. And I, and I want to say thank God for, for all of that. And Ray Mercer is a hell of a fighter, a good puncher. And I want to thank him for that opportunity. Well, they booed you when you came in and they gave you a standing ovation when you left. How does that make you feel? I love it, but you know, there's always going to be somebody they say, now they'll say Ray Mercer was nothing because they don't want to give me the credit that I do truly deserve. But it's okay because as many boo me, as many cheer for me. And you know, I love the people because they are the greatest asset. If it weren't for them, it wouldn't be a Larry Holmes. Last, last question, who do you want to fight next? Of course, I want to go right into Holyfield if, if possible. That's what I want. You know, my new promoter. Bob Ehrman, I told him I'm going to be with him until my boxing career is ended. So I'm with Bob Ehrman and whatever he decides, that's where I'm going to go. How about Foreman? It's a possibility. But, you know, again, I'm going to take it easy, go home and rest. Thank the judges in Atlantic City, the fans, <laughs> for giving me something that I truly worked hard for. All right. And I thank also want to say thanks to USA because they the one had 